Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> going, going, gone. Going, going, going. I think I've developed a habit of saying that at the beginning of these. I don't know why. Going, going, gone. Yeah, I just said it one time. It felt right, and I went with it since. <laughs> All right. Because I say it without even thinking about it. I just going, going, gone. I mean, I can't really blame you. My intro is welcome or welcome back. So, welcome or welcome back. It's the lamest intro ever. I just didn't know what to like. I put the mic there, didn't know what to say, and I'm like, all right, welcome or welcome back. And then like afterward, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's like I've been meaning to switch that up. And I, then I try to switch it up, but I find myself just going right back to where I was. In the uh huh. Yeah. I can't switch it now. It's, it's stuck. I kind of like it. Welcome, welcome or welcome, welcome back. back. <laughs> it's a greeting. I I feel a warm welcome already. It's like a Hallmark card. And the thing welcome is, welcome or you, welcome back. You don't even need to say or welcome back. It's just welcome, because like welcome or welcome back, you're still welcoming those people that have watched the show, and then you're also welcoming those people who haven't watched the show. But like it, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I I just I'm stuck with it. So. You know what you should start doing? Selling, what is it, whenever you walk in, that rugs. Front door rugs. I don't think that's the right technical term for it. Front door rugs? Yeah, but it says welcome or welcome back. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm, the, that's the, not a bad idea. That's like <laughs> a merchandising. A merch okay. opportunity right here. Damn, bro. I might fucking do that. Welcome <laughs> or welcome back. I'm not going to lie. If my fucking if my merchandise guy hears this. Let's get that going. Let's get it going. So I wanted to start with talking about your podcast. We're here with Alec Broski. Broski. Brisky, Broski, Broski. Whatever you want to call it. And, yeah, I just wanted to hop into it and ask you about your podcast. Because my understanding, I listen to a few episodes, and it's more of like an interview style. And you will get, it's called Six Drunk, One Sober. Right. So you pretty much get everybody drunk and then... You talk about whatever. You ask them, like, kind of controversial questions, it seemed. Right. Uh, so the idea came from me and my friend Nick. He, uh, We would always get drunk and, like, hammered and talk politics. And so then one night, like, we're drunk again, and he just he looks at me. He's like, what if we were to do this with a bunch of people and just put a mic in front of them? And I was like, holy fuck. If I were to get, you know, three conservatives or two conservatives, two liberals and two moderates mm -hmm. and ask them questions on politics and get them drunk, a, a shit ton of people would listen to that. So then uh, it started out as controversial. Now it's kind of moved into more like funny, random questions like is water wet where it's less controversial and more like, I mean, people still get mad. I still had someone throw a chair into a wall over a question of is a hot dog a sandwich i still have that <laughs> but like <laughs> they threw a oh, chair they, into a wall this dude stood up and just <laughs> i did you can't like see but <laughs> dude this dude launched a chair because he was pissed <laughs> at what people were saying yeah i had it on the sports <laughs> episode too same guy did it <laughs> oh my god so it moved away from how does that debate get that fucking would. I dude, I have no idea. That's so much tension. Like, that's when I realized that, oh, my God, that drunk people are just uncontrollable. <laughs> they just get mad for literally nothing. Like, I could say, hey, man, uh, your shirt's black. And they'd be like, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck do you mean his It's like a dark black? brown. Yeah, exactly. What are you saying? I, this is not a sh black shirt. Yeah. They just get so goddamn pissed about nothing. I've been scared a couple times because, like, people start yelling at me saying, like, you're not moderating it enough. Like, this is bias. And I'm like, what are you – I'm just – I'm just sitting here. The fuck do you want me to do? Calm down. <laughs> yeah. God. That's ridiculous. Wow, that's – so, like, that's what you go for, though, is, like, the controversial questions? I Obviously not those responses to those controversial questions, but trying to get some – uh crazy conversation going and honest possibly some like disagreements so originally i aimed for those types of reactions because that's what people like are interested in like people love controversy fights uh arguments anything that like 
you can watch and be like, holy shit, like it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And so like the f- my very first episode, I remember was on politics because that's what we had originally discussed. So then I asked the question, <coughs> should AR-15s be uh, illegal or should guns in general just be illegal? And the room lit up. Dude, I had people in the audience screaming at me. I had people in the ta- the the cast members screaming at me. I had people freak. Someone hit the table and was like screaming at this guy, dude. At some point, I had to realize like we had to get some people in here to control this shit. So then we got. How many people are you talking? In the audience, there was probably twenty. Twenty people watching this. Because mm-hmm. it was my first ever episode, and I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna start this podcast." And uh, people were like, oh, hell yeah. And people kept coming back to the audience because they were entertained by it because people were freaking out and yelling at each other. It's like a UFC fight without, you know, the fighting. (laughs) That's crazy. To provoke that much of a reaction. Yeah, I make sure to ask the most controversial questions, like the fourth or fifth question, because they take a shot before each question so and I asked five questions well they take a shot it's a shooter which is a shot and a half so then by the fourth question they're pretty drunk and their uh, their rationale diminishes Mm -hmm. so uh, if I'm asking a controversial question in the fourth question they're getting pissed for nothing like that that's the point where I can ask anything and they're one side's getting pissed and the other side's getting more pissed so that's when it becomes a thing of beauty. It's like late in the game, I'll ask those questions. So you wait to present the most controversial questions until the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll start with something. I love your strategy. Oh, my God, yeah. Like, I, I've I've asked questions where it's... Um, I'll ask questions in the beginning that... I've actually cut out several questions in the beginning because, like, it's their first shot. Uh, everybody wants to be respectful. Like, I've literally had a group of guys sit there, and on the first question, they're like, all right, everybody, we're going to raise our hands, we're going to talk one at a time, and we're not going to yell over each other. And the first question... I love that. I love that, by the way. They're sitting there going, all right, hey, listen, I think this. And then they'll do the the typical fucking white dude in a a sociology class of piggybacking off that. Or uh, piggybacking off that. Or yeah, in addition to that. Um, furthermore. Furthermore. <laughs> <laughs> or here's why I disagree with that. It starts out with that and then turns into, here's why you're fucking wrong. Okay. <laughs> you go to hell. Why am I believing myself? Fuck you. Go to hell. You're a piece of shit. Uh, by the fourth question. So it, it the whole, the whole everybody raise their hand one at a time turns into, nope. I'm right. You're wrong. Here's why. It's beauty. That's funny. It's it's crazy how people have these ideo- like ideologies almost like possess them to the point that anybody that sees differently than them is automatically wrong. Yeah. Sometimes both parties are right. Oh, that that's the thing. Like uh, a perfect example is one time I asked. I actually forgot what I asked. But uh these people were arguing the same thing. The same they were saying the same thing, but they were still arguing. It was like miscommunication. Yeah, and then by the end of it, uh, they looked at each other and they're both very drunk and they looked at each other, they're like, We were saying the same thing. I was like, that's why I was trying to tell you guys the whole time to calm down and like shut up. Uh huh. They wouldn't. And then listening back to it they realized that they were literally saying the exact same thing, but they were still arguing with each other. So I baffles me. Drunk people are. Yeah, that's the irrational mindset of a drunk individual. Yeah, drunk people are baffling. So how'd you get Maddie Smokes on? I DM'd him, honestly. Really? I was because I told him that. On what social media platform? On Twitter. Wow. I DM'd him and said, uh, and said, "Do you want to join this?" podcast that I'm doing and he was like yeah like I'm down like didn't expect him to say that at all um it's kind of shot your shot yeah and I've, I've done that with a lot of people honestly and we've had some decent responses um 
probably haven't had anyone as big as Maddie Smokes respond to me, but I've had a couple of decent people. But and then, do you know how I know about Maddie Smokes? How's that? Cody Co. Yeah, Cody Co. Of right. course, yeah. of course. So, <laughs> that's how I found out about. I it. love that video. That's one of my favorite Cody Co. videos of all time. I'm a huge Cody Co. fan. Those Maddie Smokes. Um, same here. Like Cody Co. and Noel are two of my favorites, and so. Uh, Whenever Maddie responded to me, I was freaking the fuck out because I was like, holy shit. Uh, and so then I flew out to Canada and did that. Really? Interview with him. Yeah. It was so dope. he's based out of Canada? Mm-hmm. Vancouver. Oh, if like if you listen to the Maddie Smokes episode, you can tell that they have Canadian accents for sure. Really? I listened and I couldn't tell. Super Canadian. Uh, like car and shit like that. Like they'll say it. Uh, but Maddie was was super dope, uh, honestly. He's so I expect him to be super cringy because the Cody Co video, you know. But he was not. He was a super cool guy. The first thing that he said to me was when I went to shake his hand, and I was like, "Hey, what's up, man? Like, nice to meet you." He goes, "Honest to God, thought you were a ser- serial killer when you messaged me." <laughs> I, was like, oh. I was like, "Oh, damn." He's like, "No, but you're chill." I'm like, "Cause he's like." maybe a year younger than me uh-huh you know he's only 20 years old he's still a kid and uh fucking yeah he was not cringy at all like i expected him to be a super cool guy super down to earth humble well it's cool like sitting across the table from somebody that has done this shit as well and like what benefits have you received because honestly in very short summary, this ex- like doing this, just taking up podcasting as a hobby, has I don't want to sound dramatic right now, but it's literally changed my life. How so? In a lot of ways, it's made me a lot. I I set goals conversationally. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that being said, like if I want to become a better listener, or if I I say I, I realize I say like too much, so I'm trying to just completely get rid of that word out of my vocabulary or if you were to talk to me right now then i'd be like "Uh uh-huh yeah Uh uh-huh all right yeah (laughs) and i say that like way too much way more than i should so it it's made me want like strive to become just a better conversationalist as a whole and then that's not even mentioning like all the different people that you have on and all the different perspectives on the world that you get. And I don't know. Everybody's got something that you can learn from them. Right. I'd say that's like a really quick summary, but it's, it's been one of the most beneficial hobbies I've ever taken up. Um, I absolutely love it. I think it's benefited me in several ways. Um, I guess the main way would probably be the conversationalist type of excuse me perspective because like like I said and before we were starting the show was I hated the sound of my own voice I, I still do frankly it's something to get over but it like it really is oh I 100% got over it and now like whenever I'm talking to people I'm definitely much more confident I, I mean I do stand up comedy in my free time so like I have that sort of very cool f- sort of that arrogance you know but uh, definitely with podcasting, especially with my especially with my show and how it's formatted, it's been phenomenal in terms of I have to control a room full of six drunk people, and so that's your job. And so that's that's my that's literally my job. So like the mic's on, and if I tell you to shut up, you're gonna shut up. Otherwise, we aren't continuing this shit. So like that has get, that has gotten me so much confidence in terms of like. This, I want this done. I need this done now. Go, go, go. Um, instead of just like, well, could you? Uh, no. Like, do it, do it, do it. I mean, that's essentially what the show has done for me. I, I guess it's a confidence builder. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I mean, going into the professional world, if I was going to go to an interview, I have no problem looking that person in the eyes. You know, just a, a lot of right. things that are going to help you out in the long run of things. Just socially better as a whole. Right. And, uh, I mean, and I've noticed it, um, especially since the Maddie interview, that 
I'm not really afraid to like message higher up people and be like, hey, what's up? Like, uh, I just messaged the other day um, a former Houston Dynamo soccer player. Oh, very cool. Brad Davis. And uh, he got back to us. He's going to be on one of our podcasts. Oh, very cool. Uh, but the fact that, like, I'm just messaging these people out of the blue and just have the complete confidence just to be like, yeah, like, this guy could be on the show, you know? Or this girl could be on the show. Um, has really... I don't know how that's exactly benefited me. I, I guess that's the confidence. I'm going back to the confidence thing. Over I like over. that a lot because, honestly, I haven't even put too much thought into getting like bigger guests on here more so just my college buddies sitting down having a beer talking about random things that's <laughs> that's what all this started out as and it's cool it's cool so how did you figure out how to monetize it i thought that was really interesting how to monetize it yeah um well one it's about Uh, it's about the platform that you post on. Um, like I post on Spreaker, so it makes money per ad. And then also in terms of marketing. What do you mean that like per ad? Per view, and then that converts to yeah, X so amount? Like I, put, I can put up to three ads. Well, I can put more. I don't. But I can put up to three ads in my podcast. Um, the beginning, mid-roll, and end. And each time someone views that, that's like, I don't know. I don't even know what it is, like half a cent per view or some wild shit. Mm -hmm. And so then it, however many people view my podcast, I'm making that money um, just from those views, just from them listening to it. Although I have a really, really bad retention rate, as you can imagine, with drunk people. Like, they'll listen for a solid, you know, 10, 15 minutes and then just... <laughs> Uh -huh. It cuts off dramatically. Um, there's been a couple episodes where people have, you know, like the Maddie episode, people stayed, 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 and then cut off, like, when the episode ended, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, Good retention. Yeah, but for the most part, it's they'll stay for 10, 15 minutes, and then most people will cut out, and then I'll probably retain about, like, 20% of the audience. By what do you, the what do you post on? Uh, what platform? Mm -hmm. Spreaker. Spreaker, like, specifically? Yeah. Okay. Spreaker, and then Spreaker goes out to, because they're a hosting site, so Spreaker goes out everywhere. So they go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all that shit. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I did with Anchor. I love Anchor, um, but when I moved to Spreaker, I moved because of uh, Big Red World, which I think I might have messaged you about, but... Um, What's that? It's the company that we have. It's a multimedia platform. Right now, we just got into gaming, but we have a hosting. We have a hosting site, Spreaker, and then we have several podcasts under us that essentially post for us. Um, and then, like Walking with Anxiety, is a show that we recently got in the past couple months, and it's a show basically. This guy talks about all oh shit dealing with anxiety. It's a mental health podcast. Really, really solid shit. And um, he posts for us for Big Red World, gives us recognition, and then we give him recognition in our other shows. Like, I'll say on Six Drunk, I'll be like, uh, also check out the other shows from Big Red World. And so then my audience uh, gravitates towards this, this Big Red World and then views all of our other podcasts. And so that's a huge, huge marketing tool that uh, we use because it's like six different shows saying like hey check out these other shows mm -hmm. and when you get six different audiences looking to one central location your audience is going to grow and that's what makes sense happened with big red world cross promotion right that's what we've been doing and it's been successful so far i mean we've been growing like crazy but yeah so how do you how do you link up with these advertisers uh spreaker does it for you automatically Really? You can go out and try and get, you know, sponsors, which brings you more money, but it's harder to do, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Do they put the advertisements in there like an arbitrary point? Maybe like the beginning, middle, end, or no? You can choose. You can choose where you want to put it. I mean, the so if you upload the original audio and then put that on there, blank slate. I mean, I mean, just the audio. You kind of all right at forty three minutes twenty seconds. I want to put it right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely do that. You'd have to know for sure about your audio though. Like, if you want to do like, uh, now we'll cut to commercial break. You have to know like what time that is in order to set that. But if okay. you don't really care, you can just forty three minutes, twenty seconds, put it there. You're good to go. Okay. Yeah. It's a great system, honestly. Makes it very easy. But I think you make more money from Anchor. Really? Yeah. Only because Anchor you do personalized ads. Have you gotten into that, I'm assuming? No. You haven't? Okay. Uh so I forgot when I started doing that. But with Anchor, you do personalized ads, which is like you speaking into the mic saying like, uh, by the way, check this out. And they'll give you like a script that you need to read and shit. Um, with Spreaker, they just put in an ad that you would see on TV from like Home Depot, Subway. Absolutely. Like all this shit. But with Anchor, it makes you more because, you know, you're personalizing it, which is harder to do. Okay, Interesting. And then, but you do the exact same thing with Anchor. You just get the raw audio footage, and then another. I guess you it'd be like a eight minute, or however long, maybe three four minutes of you talking, and then it's like I want to put it at this point in the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, pretty much. Yeah, podcasting is uh, an insane way to make easy money if you have an audience. Mm. It's probably the easiest so like youtube for example so like one company was paying me uh twenty dollars per thousand so cpm so per mile so per thousand views mm -hmm. um and youtube for the same like per thousand views will pay you like four wow so podcasting but there's a double-edged sword because obviously podcasting isn't going to be as popular as youtube so like you can upload your videos and more people are willing to watch a video than they are a podcast depending on who you are so theoretically you'd make more money doing podcasting which is why so many youtubers like cody co um <coughs> ethan klein are moving into podcasting because you make th four times the amount of money that you would as a fucking youtube uh huh. Because you know? they're not cutting fifty percent of that pro or fifty five, whatever it is, of that right. profit. Right. That's just when you're podcasting. That's just straight profit for you. Mm. It's insane. That's really interesting. That's something I would like to look into because I've more so just been doing this as a hobby, and haven't looked at like looked too much into monetizing it or anything like that. I'd recommend it, especially um, if you have like a following. Do merchandise. Really? You'll make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Really? Just from like friends and. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just because people will want to just buy your shit, even if you do something as small as koozies. Like I, I remember when I put out my original merchandise. I haven't really pushed my new shit a whole lot, but uh, when I put out my original shit, like I had friends saying like, "Oh yeah, we want to." Like I had um, <coughs> a group of people that I didn't know come on the podcast i'll have that some people will message me and be like hey like i want to be on the podcast and i'll be like all right cool uh but i had this group of people saying like oh we want to get that the merchandise of it just because they were on an episode you know so mm -hmm. it's like a cool or really thing and i don't overcharge them for it you know i'm not charging like fucking 30 dollars profit so it's affordable to like a college student because right. obviously a majority of my audience is college based so uh if you charge them the right amount, then they'll be like, yeah, that's a cool thing that I can remember doing that by. And uh, So how did you do this exactly? Are you going through, like, a manufacturer that is going to ship it out and do everything for you? Yeah. Okay. So they'll ship it to those individuals' houses? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. We have a store over at Big Red World because I, I, have, a, I have a guy 
Uh, the name of the thing is Gillen Graphics. I doubt anyone around here knows that, but people in Illinois might. Um, and all I had to do was put my logo on a shirt, and we have a store open, and people go and they order that on the store, and then it ships right to them three, four days. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. Yeah. It's solid, honestly. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I just haven't looked into monetizing, like, at all. Monetizing? No, it's, uh, I would, with podcasting, monetizing is probably the easiest thing in the world. Making money could be hard, but in terms of monetizing it, it's very easy. It's just like marketing it. You just fucking ass blast people. You watch It's Always Sunny? Yeah, absolutely. The fucking ass blast. Episode. I haven't seen that episode, no. Oh, damn, dude, that's a great episode. I love It's Always Sunny. God damn. If I were to have a one dream podcast, it would be the It's Always Sunny crew with Bo Burnham. That'd be my, <laughs> ultimate, my ultimate crew. That would be that would be great. Bo Bur Burnham's great. He's oh, great. Oh, God. I love that guy. Even though he's a prick. But I'm a prick. So. Well, there you go. Makes sense. Uh, the other people that I want to... And this might happen. I've been talking to Maddie about it. Uh, we're more than likely, because he said he's he's probably free at that time. More than likely, we're flying Maddie, Smokes, and Liam Vapes in mm -hmm. on October sixteenth. Oh, very cool. Which um, is I don't think it's a tailgate. That's not a tailgate for sure. It's not a tailgate. But that's the date that Cody Co and Noel Miller are down here. Really? Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is get. Maddie smokes Liam vapes, Cody and Noel, all on the podcast. Wow! Together, yeah, it's gonna be dope because Maddie was recently, or Cody was recently in Vancouver with Maddie, and they were hanging out. Yeah, and Maddie was on. <sighs> I mean, they were there for a show, uh -huh. but, but uh, he linked up with Maddie. Uh, linked up. I don't even know what terminology to use there. Linked up sounds weird Th they were in the same vicinity <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah anyway so um cody and maddie were in the same area obviously and cody invited maddie and liam to their show and so they were like hanging out maddie was at his show uh on stage with them because obviously anyone that has a ticket to cody and noel is going to know maddie smokes Cody it's highly likely. <laughs> yeah, like that's one of their most popular videos. Yeah, like, like Cody grew. Maddie I'm gonna smokes. move this away from the computer if you're cool. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, Cody grew Maddie Smokes 100, percent but Maddie Smokes also grew Cody Co. a bunch. Because after that video, like they gained a significant amount of subs subscribers. Halsey acknowledged them on Twitter. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So like. But, uh, but, what was I on that train of thought? Dude, Maddie Smokes is like the prime example of there's no such thing as bad publicity. No, no shit. That, but that kid handled it with grace. Like, I'm not kidding. When, because most people would be like, oh, damn, dude. Like, that fucking video with Jake Paul. You gotta embrace it. If you're trying yeah. to build a brand around your name, like, build, you know, yourself as a brand, then. You gotta embrace it. That's oh. the best way to go about it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna try to start some conflict, then Cody's not gonna care. And yeah. then, no. And and Maddie handled that perfectly because he was like, "All right, funny video, uh, making fun of me. I get it." And then Maddie just used that to his advantage because now he embraces the Maddie fucking smoke. Like we even made merchandise for him earlier, and it was Maddie smokes on the sleeves and then fucking in the middle. Uh -huh. Maddie fucking smokes, right? And that only came because of Cody Co. But uh, like I said, <laughs> so like they were on a show together, so they're flying in, and more than likely, like Maddie is going to be able to get into that show. Uh, I was thinking about going state. to that, by the way. Oh, tickets are expensive as hell. I think it was like forty bucks for whatever I was looking for, but I I decided against it because I'm going to Europe in uh, about six months. So damn. I could definitely afford it now. Like, looking at my finances now, 
no problem. But at the time, I was like, I don't know like where I'm going to fall on this. I'm trying to save as much money as possible. I just don't want to spend anything. Like what we were saying before, living frugally. <laughs> living frugally. <laughs> what are you going to uh, Europe for? I'm just going for 90 days. I'm not studying abroad or anything. No school, no obligations. I'll be graduated at that point, so just kind of doing my thing. God damn, dude. Yeah, I'll probably go with that girl that you met upstairs. I'll probably me and her, and then uh, the guy that wasn't in your class, he'll probably meet up with us after he graduates in May, so it'll be the following month. Damn. Oh, shit. Where, Should be where, a good time. Where, where are you going? Like, what countries? Uh, honestly, it's uh, very, very loose right now, but... I want to hit Croatia, Spain, Italy, Greece. I mean, Netherlands, Amsterdam. Of course. That's going you to got, be for sure. France will probably be present at some point. I, honestly, I'm just trying to hit as much as possible. And I'll have the means to do it by that point, so it'll work out well. Damn. My, my, uh, one of my bucket list items is doing an Irish jig in an Irish pub in Ireland. What's an Irish jig? Like a fucking you can't see my feet but it's one of the dances that Irish people do when they're drunk or <laughs> sober. Dude, I don't know. Honestly. But uh, Irish people are crazy. I went to a hostel in San Diego and those do. I met like I think it was like 10 of them. They were all wanting to get one tiny house or apartment or something and all live together. It sounded like they were going to be crammed in this, but they were living out of this hostel at this point. I was just there for a night, but God damn. these guys were wild, man. I don't know if I could do that for a long period of time, but I am one of those guys that I'll go on vacation. Would you mind handing me another beer down there? Thank you, good sir. This guy. Um, I am one of those guys that will go on vacation and spend the minimal amount of money. So like I'm packing in people into the fucking hotel. Uh huh. Like I'm but like if I'm like for instance, me and my friend went to L.A. Uh, two years back. We got the hotel for six hundred dollars a week in this hotel. It's not bad a week. Or, it's not bad. Yeah, for the week. Yeah. Our fucking dude. This hotel was a shithole. Like, this place scared the <laughs> fuck out of me. Holy shit. Like, it was... It was like walking around Springfield, Missouri in the middle of the night. It was terrifying. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> exactly. I'm picking up. Smell what I'm stepping in. So were these, what, like, homeless people living out of there? or Dude, I don't know. But... It... it Here's how bad it was. They they offered a continental breakfast, right? The continental breakfast was, and I shit you not, was bread and jelly. But, 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 they did have a toaster there. So you could toast the bread. So maybe that was the continental part, you know? No peanut butter? No peanut butter. No butter? No butter. Just... You can't make actual, genuine fucking American toast. No, you can't. It's just fucking bread and jelly. <laughs> Dude, I was so pissed off. Because, like, I'm like, all right, like, let's not pay. Let's save a couple bucks. Let's save expenses on food. Right. Let's get let's get the continental breakfast and be on our way. And then I walk down there. Bread. Jelly. That's crazy. Nothing more. Fuck well, that guy. Well, going back to the monetization of, like, podcasts, what would you say, like, if you were wanting to start out? Because I'm, I'm very curious about this. This is uh, this would be a cool, like, next step, I guess you'd say. Well, <laughs> the next step. Uh, I'm, I'm talking, like, specifically, like, ad revenue. Right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug Big Red World again. Again. Sorry. Just because... They, at least so far, at each one of our members has gotten more views from us. So more views equals more revenue, and we put you on Spreaker. But in terms of revenue, wh no matter what uh, hosting site you use, as long as you just click the monetization button, because most people, 
most sites are just going to make it easy for podcasters to be able to monetize. Like it's Why just is that? How they work? Just because they're going to make a shit ton of money because ad companies are going to be like, "Hey, we want to, we want to advertise on your site." They're going to be like, "All right, pay us this." Like they'll get contracts from each people and be like, "All right, pay this this amount of money," and then uh, we will monetize that on every single podcast that we fucking have. And if you get big host sites like Spreaker, Anchor, Lisbon, you know that shit. Uh-huh. Like ad companies are gonna pay out the ass for shit like that, because that's a lot of monetization going on. Um, the other thing is just marketing your podcast, and I have gotten so much shit, so much shit, for people like will message me on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Twitter, and be like. Hey, like this is the fifth time I've seen your fucking promotion for your podcast for this episode, and I'm just okay. Like, unfollow me. Like, I, I'm not gonna not mm. post on every fucking platform that I have. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I'm not. Think just about gonna, any like, celebrity. Right. Any celebrity. They're posting what they're doing at that point in time. That, I mean, a lot of the times they're making money on it as well. Right. Like, I, I'm. I'm not just gonna like not post on snapchat just to make this person like feel good and not see my shit like no i'm going to push the fuck out of it because if you're doing your job right as a podcaster or frankly any business you have if people are annoyed by your marketing tactic you've done your job right because if people are annoyed that means that people now know your shit like, I mm. promise you, I promise you that the person that was annoyed with my posting of my podcast they know the knows name. what Six Drunk What Sober is. Absolutely. I promise you. And that's like any marketing tactic that companies use with the... Repetition, repetition, repetition. Uh, like, I worked for a car dealership um, not too long ago, and Offenberg was their name. And their marketing thing was Berg is the word. Because Offenberg, yeah, they're clever as fuck. <laughs> Not really, but uh, so they would post on post. They would do commercials where Berg is the word, like a b- b- Berg, 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 Berg is the word. Annoyed, I like that. I like that. The fuck out of me because I would see that all the time. But you know, it was stuck in my head. Berg is the word. Jingles, so, so jingles, so, baby. So when someone's like, "Hey, I need a car," guess what I fucking thought of? Offenberg, immediately. So like, if people are annoyed by it, you're doing your job right. Yeah, that's one take on it. I like that. I like that. Oh God, I can't even tell you how many people have been annoyed with me though. <laughs> so many. Too many. Too many. I, I guess you could say that. I've had a lot of people, uh, I mean, I've had a lot of people follow me from it, but also a lot of people unfollow me from it because they're just not interested Mm -hmm. at that point. It's like, all right, well, but you know, the name, (laughs) they do know the name. Hopefully one day it'll be very big. I'll be able to hopefully be like flip the bird, flip the bird. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, honestly, um, it it seems like you've looked into more of the business side of podcasting. Um, I've been, I've been, I am a finance major. My dad, big finance guy. So my whole life I've been in this business aspect of it. So like originally I got into this just fucking around and just being drunk. But when like I had people in like. When did it start by the way? Like May. Of May of last this year of 2018. Oh, okay. So like a year and like four months, five months, something yeah. like that. And it's grown about every day since. Oh wow! No lie. Um, I've had people in in Dallas hit me up and be like, "Yo, this is a crazy idea for a show. Like, this is insane." And because the the concept that I have of six of six drunk people talking into a mic, uh huh, and one sober person like asking them questions is unprecedented and and uh, a very marketable idea because that's that's how i've gotten some celebrities to 
to answer me back is just like, hey, I've, I have this podcast. If I get six people drunk, ask them controversial questions, would you like to join? And they're like, well, yeah. I mean, that's a short thing. I have a whole paragraph I have that I pitch. but um, And some people have hit me up and been like, yeah, like I'm down to do that because that sounds fun. Um, and so shit like that is just... And then I realized from that point that like I have a very marketable idea and so then instead of like doing this just as like fucking around and doing friends and family type of thing you can make this into a business you just gotta know how to market the idea of it and it's been successful so far I mean I've had people in San Diego hit me up I've had people in Miami hit me up in Dallas like I said uh, Chicago like I've had people from all over the country people are watching and and be like, hey, like, uh, I just had a guy in Pensacola message me the other night and was like, hey, um, I have a great cast for you to come down to Pensacola. And they were like, yeah, like, we'll, 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 uh, we'll pay for your, your home or your home, your hotel and drinks and everything, which is super dope. That's crazy. Like, I've never met these people, mm-hmm. but they still want to be on the, on the show. It's, cra- it's fucking crazy. That's honestly. awesome. I'm happy. That's the cool thing, too, is you. it's very uh, – you can transport the equipment pretty efficiently. Oh, yeah. It's uh, not too much. That's why I can't have an elaborate setup like this. Mm-hmm. Just because I don't – I'm lazy as fuck. I don't want to set this up every time. So I just have the mic and just – no, it's too much. Going back to, like, whenever I was saying I'm going to Europe, I'm just going to throw the recorder, which was my original setup in here, and just the recorder and my camera, and that's super easy because I'm going to be living out of a backpack for 90 days. God damn, I envy that. I envy that because, like, anywhere I go, I live out of a backpack because I'm not a big, not a big believer in, like, carrying fucking – and my mom gets on my ass because, like, we, like when we went on a cruise uh, this summer, and I packed like a just shit on the shelf that was like that normal people would pack for a weekend. Mm-hmm. I packed for seven days. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, so I envy living out of a backpack. I would absolutely love it. Yeah, I feel like it's an art. Definitely an art living out of a backpack. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I don't even fully understand it yet. I've only done it for three weeks total, and that was across the United States, which not that the location matters, but I was in my home country, wasn't speaking foreign languages. So we'll see how Europe is. We'll see. <laughs> Where did you go out in the United States? Uh, so I went from <coughs> St. Louis to Kansas City to Denver to Colorado Springs, then we rented a car. All of that before was like Greyhound bus. My dad drove us from St. Louis to Kansas City. But bef- besides that, Greyhound buses, which fucking suck. Oh, yeah. And from Colorado Springs, we rented a car. We hit like probably 10, 10 to 20 maybe national parks. Saw the Breaking Bad house and a ton of other Breaking Bad things in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which... Damn. Albuquerque, New Mexico, at least to my judgment, is really fucking boring besides the fact that Breaking Bad was filmed there. But uh, maybe that's being hypercritical. I don't know. But then from there, went to Vegas. Oh, no, no, no. We um, we went to – oh, where was it? Um, it was a Zion National Park, and we met these two German girls – then we, had, we met up with them in Vegas. We dropped our car off in Vegas because that was like the predetermined destination that we were going to leave it at. We left our car in Vegas. The girls drive, drove us from San Diego and then went from San Diego to L.A. to San Francisco. Then I flew home. And I was with two of my Australian friends who did not like each other at the time. And I was, like, switching off between those two friends because they both liked me, but – and they both wanted to do this trip, but they didn't want to do it together. So they were together for, like, two, three days at a time, but that's about it. <laughs> they were together in San Diego and Denver, and I believe that – yeah, that was it. That was it. We had, uh, we had a trip like that planned between me and my friend. We were going to go 
from St. Louis and then do kind of like a like a vagina shape. Like of course. Oval. Yeah, of course, you already know what I'm talking about. Of course. Why it's would you not be a vagina <laughs> on the map of the U.S.? <laughs> we were going to do that, but uh, people didn't have enough money. Dude, it's it's way cheaper than I thought. That that entire trip that I just mentioned, one thousand three hundred dollars, and it was a thousand besides the trip home. Like the plane ticket home was about two three hundred dollars. Everything else a thousand dollars, and I was living like crazy frugally. But I mean, I'm talking three weeks of doing all that shit, a thousand bucks. And my my buddy also helped me out a fair amount. Like he covered some of the the costs on the car rental and whatnot, but like there were a few there were a few things that he kind of helped me out on a little bit. But more of the story is that travel's cheaper than you think. Like two thousand would have been more than enough, more than enough. And you uh, know, I I didn't I couldn't like do some things that I wanted to do. Like nothing comes to mind at the moment. But if I was in say. Denver, for example, and I wanted to go see a Colorado Rockies game, then I'd be like, mm, rather not. Probably not watch that. I would not have done that, especially if I'm trying to live frugally. That's what we were trying to do. Is like, so we had like ten people, and I, I think I, I, uh, <coughs> I had the finances at like eight hundred dollars a person, just because it was obviously going to be cheaper because there's ten fucking people, mm-hmm. and we were gonna take a two cars or two vans across everywhere uh, and we were going to stay in like cheap ass campsites cheap ass fucking or just park on the side of the road and sleep in the van like I don't care I just want to see some places you know what I mean that's how we met those German girls we literally pulled on the side of the road found this campsite and they parked there too it was like us them and one other couple see that's an experience you could talk about like it's cra- it was crazy that's the experience. Spontaneity, that man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, people were like, oh, no, dude, like, we got to stay in this hotel. I'm like, well, fucking why? All dude, right, fuck let's, the let's hotels. Just have, let's just have an experience, you know? Oh, it was it was going to be dope. Didn't end up doing it. Forgot what we did instead. Oh, my friend and I flew out to L.A. just to – because we wrote a TV script at the time. Oh, nice. We were trying to sell it. Didn't sell it. Um Turns out we're amateurs, uh, which makes total sense because <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. But you tried. But I tried. That's the important part. But I tried. It's the hashtag. Yeah, I'm not going to be one of those people that says, like, travel is so important. Travel every travel changes you. But, like, it really did. That three weeks, it felt like two months, three months. Like, it felt like forever because so much happened every single day. And that experience, I would never trade back, and it was incredible, and it really did. It changed who I am. It really changed who I am. Oh, dude, travel changes you. I, I, like, I don't care about the cliche, travel changes you. Like, like, when we flew out to L.A., two fucking white kids that, okay, so, like, I grew up in Columbia, Illinois. If you don't know anything about Columbia, Illinois, be white. That's all you fucking need. That's all you fucking mm-hmm. need in Columbia, Illinois. So Wait, like, why? What? Because it's predominantly white and Christian. Okay. So, like, I think we had maybe... Be white or get the fuck out. Like, pretty much. <laughs> and then, like, growing up, that's what I was accustomed to, obviously. And then, so then when I went to L.A., major culture shock. Like, major. Like, th- this... All of a sudden, I'm seeing people on the on the fucking subway or whatever the fuck it is, Metrolink, or I don't know, come out to me in L.A. and like screaming at me for n- no reason. Like w- one woman like looked at me and yelled, "You fucking white boy, you better get off this train!" And I was like, "Holy shit!" All and that all happened just because like I happened to be looking in her direction when she was screaming at somebody. Uh huh. And so, like, that culture shock was insane because I realized, oh, shit. Did you hit her? <laughs> Come on. You can tell me if you did. Between me and you. <laughs> like, forget the camera right now. You define, hit her. Define hit her. 
like straight one two to the face. <laughs> okay. Just backhand right through her fucking skull. No, uh, I think at that moment I was the biggest pussy I've ever been in my life mm. and ran like a scared child. I have seriously never been so scared for someone to look me dead in the eyes and say, you fucking white boy. Like, I thought, I thought I was dead. Mm. No lie. I thought, this is it. This is how I fucking die. The last words I hear are, you fucking white boy. This crazy girl right here. Dude. And she just picked you out of the crowd? I happen to look at her. There are so many crackheads in L.A. Or, I'm sorry. Pardon my terminology for you people out there. That Literally any fucking boogies. St. Louis. I mean, what am I saying? Any fucking city in the United States. So many fucking crackheads. So many homeless people. Oh, my God. I don't know what I think of it. I don't know, because that kind of, like, alludes to economics and, like, what's the be- best economic philosophy, and I don't really necessarily know. But with that being said, um, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Dude, dude like, because, like, I live by St. Louis, but, like, I don't go into the city a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. Like, I know the city's more fucked up than L.A., but I just don't go into the city. So then when we were, when we were living in this crack hotel. Same. With, would you mind giving me that other beer right there? When we were living Thank in you, this good, sir. crack hotel with, uh, dude, I can't even begin to explain how much different it was. Like, we're sitting there. And I'm like, holy shit. Uh, not everything is the way that I was growing up around. Because this shit's fucked. Culture shock. Yeah. Like, this shit is fucked. Like, there were... I, I, I walked around one night. Uh, fuck me. I was playing Pokemon Go. But <laughs> I was walking around one night in L.A. And, dude, there were, like, people, like, walking walking up to me and uh, speaking to me in Spanish and I speak a little bit of Spanish but not enough to where like I can identify everything that you're saying Mm -hmm. and that shit scared the fuck out of me because they're they're like walking they're like walking dangerously close (laughs) in an alley where there's no light and I'm scared shitless and then like I sprinted back to my hotel that's all you're hearing pretty, pretty much uh, and then I sprinted back to my hotel, and my, my friend asked me, he's like, dude, what the fuck? Like, are you okay? And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then, like, I just went back to bed, scared as shit. Fuck L.A. Fuck culture shock. Man. My biggest culture shock, I lived in Chicago for a while, and Ooh. it's probably very similar. I mean, we're talking about two of the biggest – cities in the United States what I mean they'd probably be what New York Chicago LA maybe San Francisco maybe Phoenix Phoenix is big really I think Phoenix is the top four no shit really yeah wow would not never been never been would not expect it Arizona's dope I think it's a bunch of retired people that are playing golf honestly a lot of rich people in yeah, fucking people. You like? Do you play golf? Nah. Shit ton of golf courses that are like artificial that mm-hmm. they have to make because like they don't have oh, wow. water down there. Yeah, yeah. Dude, so it's more expensive, but a bunch of old people go down there. Wow. Because they're nice as shit. Because they're artificial. Yeah. Phoenix is dope. Um, I enjoyed it, but it's a necessity. I don't know. Necessity at that point. Yeah. <laughs> they literally need to because of the. You know, that whole desert thing or whatever. The whole desert thing or whatever. You know what they're going through, yeah. It's you know the dry. the largest desert in the world? Sahara. Nope. What is it? Antarctica. Oh, yeah. oh fuck. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I learned that the yeah. other night. I thought that was absolutely insane. Because, yeah. like, what defines a desert is... Is a barren wasteland. 
God. Damn oh, it. she the girl that told me this, she said it was like I forgot what it was, but it was like just a few inches of rain a year. Mm-hmm. It's based on precipitation. And like yeah, that makes sense. But fuck that. It's not that good. That's funny. Well, cool. You want to wrap this up? I'm down. Cool. Honestly, I got to take a piss, and that's usually when I end up wrapping <laughs> things up is whenever I have to pee. <laughs> All right, and we're going to wrap this up because I have to take a piss. That's that's what we'll leave it at. Well, cool, cool. Thank you, Alec. Thank you Appreciate for it. having me on. Appreciate oh, absolutely, it man. Much.